What we're going to look at today is how to use the um, how to consume a web service using the WCF client in PowerBuilder.net. So here we have PowerBuilder.net. You see, I've I've got a, a little sample WPF application um, ready to go here. It's got a, a list um, a single line edit where I can put in some text I want to search on, a search button that's not coded yet, and a list view for the results. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the Amazon Web Service as a sample. Um, Primarily because it requires has some uh, additional security requirements that uh, is difficult to handle using the .NET engine in uh, PowerBuilder Classic. So we're going to see uh, exactly what the WCF client does for us. So I've got um, a WCF client. Well, let me actually start from scratch. What you would do is you'd say new WCF client proxy. Uh, give it a, pro a project name. Give it a uh, URL you want to access. So I'm going to go grab that, stick it right here. That's the URL for the uh, for the WSDL for the Amazon Web Service. Uh, give a namespace for the assembly it's going to get created, the proxy name you're going to you're going to want to assign to it, and what library you want to stick that in. And it goes out and reads the services, shows you what the service is going to look like. Now I've gone ahead and done that in this one, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull that one back up. So here's the WCF service. There's the uh, there's the WSDL file again, the list of services. It, here's an indication of the uh, the uh, assembly name that's going to get created, um, and the PIBL name that uh, it's going to store the uh, the proxy in. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to Oops. Run that. And you see what what happened here is is PowerBuilder created a bunch and, and Amazon's a little weird. It's got uh, a number of different endpoints here. We're going to use this first one right there. Um, what you don't see like you did you like in the uh, .NET uh, engine, you would see a bunch of structures and uh, that would be generated here um, that are used for data transfer. That's all now down here in this assembly that got created. So everything other than the, uh, the this one power builder object that's up here, well, the one we're going to use, that's a power builder object. It's got a bunch of code in it for actually calling the web service. So aside from that, everything else is down here in, in this assembly. And then, so these are all the, the data types that are used uh, by the Amazon web services. So we've created a uh, a uh, a, uh, an assembly, we've got our, our proxy, now we want to go ahead and use that. So I'm going to go into the clicked event and I'm going to do a little shortcut here. I've got some pre-written code. Um, the basic thing you need to see is here is where you are creating a um, an instance of the uh, Power Builder object that acts as the proxy for the uh, web service. And in this case, uh, I'm doing a little extra work. I'm setting the URL for the endpoint. And I'm also setting the transport security mode because that's required for the Amazon Web Services. Um, a bunch of the rest of this is just um, preparing our request. So I'm going to be searching uh, Amazon Books for whatever my search term is. Um, a couple of things I need to pass in in order to use the Web Service, the Amazon Web Services. I need to enter my access key ID in my associate ID, so I'm doing that now. And then here's another, here's where you get into some of the secure requirements. Um, I have to add a uh, AWS access key ID is, as a uh, header item in the request, as well as this, my secret key, that's the third item, access key ID, associate ID, and the secret key that all get, uh, all get used, that Amazon provided. Um, and this actually uh, gets signed. You see right here, SHA-256. So that, that's actually being signed as it's being added to the header. And then I can make the request out to the web service, get the results back, populate the list box. Okay, so it all looks pretty good. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run this. So this is the uh, WPF application compiling. And 
and we go ahead and hit search and blam we got an error message see this is where uh, demos hit the real world there's actually a bug in the Amazon Web Services um, and let me pull this over here and show it to you real quick there's a comment here in the um, in the news in the in the uh, Amazon's uh, uh, forums about uh, some problems with the uh, the WSDL that uh, they're currently using they have um, one of the image set array declared as unbounded and, and, and well it's not supposed to be an array and the, this image set's not supposed to be an array uh, image set would be um, or actually the other way around so the, the image sets should only be one the image set within image sets should be an array so what's happening is is that when when um, WP, WCF created the uh, proxy classes that it was going to use, it, it declared this thing to be an array, and it only got a single value back, and it said uh, that doesn't work. Uh, I can't I can't convert those, um, and that's appropriate. So what we're going to do, uh, there's actually a, a, a solution that's provided in there, um, where what you do is you actually pull down the whistle, edit it. That's the wrong thing. Pull down the WSDL, edit it to correct that part of the WSDL. So here's a local copy of that same WSDL. I'm going to use that instead. I'm going to regenerate the proxy. And now I'm going to rerun the application. Once again, we're waiting for WPF to compile. Okay, I'm going to be searching for Power Builder Books. I hit search, and voila, there you go. Uh, sample code uh, is available um, uh, off of. Uh, I got a, I have a Google Docs folder, um, so if you uh, email me at bruce.armstrong at yahoo.com, I can send you a link for that, and you can see the sample code and, and try it out yourself. And I hope you've enjoyed the presentation.